this F1 reinstatement case is even more difficult than the last one we just did over here. You can check that out. That was a case where we had one motion to reopen, a second motion to reopen, a third motion to reopen. But this case is even worse. The student filed the reinstatement, it got denied. Filed the motion to reopen, it got denied. And now we are filing the second motion to reopen. And we got it approved. But the basis of it was mental illness. It was so difficult. It was so, 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 so difficult. I really didn't think it was gonna get approved. Let me walk you through everything that happened. Let's get to it. Hi everyone, my name is Joseph. I'm the managing partner here at Zan Associates where we solve legal problems with creative solutions. So the legal problem is we needed an F1 reinstatement. Why do we need an F1 reinstatement? It was because the student was here on a PhD program. It was a great school, she was studying hard, but she fell out of status, not of her own fault. She, she's a PhD student, she knows so many things, so she filed her own reinstatement. USCIS denied her, and then she filed a re, uh, motion to reopen, to reopen that. And she's been doing this for the past two, three years. Let me actually find all the dates for you. She started Started school in 2015. Then in December 2021, she was a student, but there's something that got messed up with her I-20, so she fell out of status. In August of 2022, she filed her reinstatement. The case was denied in December 2022, within four months. But now this is already really scary, right? Because she fell out of status, it's already over four months. After six months of unlawful presence, now there's a three-year three, three year bar. So it's getting really stressful. She's telling her mom, everybody's freaking out. Then she filed her motion to reopen in January of 2023. Within uh, less than a month, less than a month, around 20 days, she filed the motion to reopen. Then her case was denied again within like a few months. So a few months after her motion to reopen was denied, after her reinstatement was denied, after falling out of status in like 2021, we had to present this argument. And when we looked at the denial, for the motion to reopen and the original reinstatement. Basically, USCIS just does not accept mental illness as a reason why it was beyond her control to study. And honestly, I feel like that's not fair. Mental illness is a real thing, but when we looked at the documents she presented, it could have been done better. It's still a hard case to prove because it's so easy to say you have mental illness. Like, how do you document that, right? So here's what we did, right? We presented the affidavits, we got school counselors to write letters, we contacted the DSO, the DSO was willing to support her, we, we got her dissertation paperwork, we also got an official psychiatric diagnosis of her depression and anxiety disorder, we explained everything, we put everything together. Again, this case, everything was writing on it because she was getting her PhD. If this case is denied, she had to quit her PhD program from a really good school, and then she can't complete her program. She's barred from entering the US for probably 10 years. That will only cause her mental illness to get worse. We filed it in March 13th, 2023. April 12th of 2023, the motion to reopen was accepted. So that's one huge case, right? Because if the motion to reopen is accepted and then later on denied, at least the unlawful presence is like stalled. So that was a huge breath of relief. One day later on the USAS website, April 13th, we approved your 539. So I approved the original application she filed back in um, August of 2022. Like this past six, seven months, was just a crazy or ordeal for her, for our team, because everything was riding on the line. We were just holding on to the hope that an officer would understand how serious mental illness was and why this little hiccup in, in her education process will cause such a severe consequence. We really leaned into her dissertation, leaned in on her school counselors, and we provided everything. The miracle doesn't stop there. After the case was approved, she was studying and she's able to graduate, but she's worried that she wouldn't get her OPT status. Most of the time during reinstatements, you save your, your education, you save your unlawful presence, but you don't get OPT. The school was kind enough to extend the OPT to her. So now not only does she not have unlawful presence, everything was saved, now she can also continue to work in the US for at least a year on OPT status after she graduates. This is a, was a double miracle. The client was so thankful, and I'm personally very, very thankful that 
mental illness is something that the officers understand. And this is just a shout out to USCIS that thank you for understanding and this will change this family's life forever. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. We love working on these. We love helping students and we love making dreams come true. Take care. Bye-bye.